this video, we're gonna talk about the People's Power Revolution, also known as the EDSA Revolution. What really happened in EDSA Revolution? Why did EDSA Revolution happen? Who are the people involved in this event? So let's go, as we talk about the history of People's Power Revolution. Let's go! go. The beginning of the 1970s was difficult. Student activism was growing. Workers were on strike. The value of peso was halving while the price of oil and commodities rose. It's Marcos' last term as a 10th president of the Philippines, and he can't run again. A new constitution is being drafted, and someone has exposed the payment to the delegates. There are also rumors about the luxurious lifestyle of the Marcos family and about the plans of President Marcos to prolong his leadership in the country. On the night of September 23, 1972, military soldiers quietly spread throughout Metro Manila. Within two hours, they arrested 8,000 people, senators, journalists, students, and labor leaders. All this happens just two days ago since martial law was signed on September 21, 1972 in the Philippines. My uh, countrymen, as of the 21st of uh, this month, I signed Proclamation Number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. This uh, proclamation was uh, to be implemented upon my clearance. Marcos jailed anyone who opposed his declaration of martial law. Soldiers also attacked newspaper radio and television offices when the filipino people woke up in the morning there is no newspapers to read radio to listen and television to watch every country has a military force to serve and protect the people but during martial law the military has more power over the civilian population how did the life of filipino civilians change under martial law first of all the president is the one who makes the law because the congress has been closed rallies and gatherings are prohibited the factory strikes is also prohibited so you have to be careful when speaking against the government because there are informers who will report those in power there was a curfew from 10 p.m to 4 a.m there were checkpoints on various roads through arrest, search, and seizure orders. The military arrested and detained suspected enemies of the government. Other members of the opposition were placed under house arrest or essentially imprisoned in their own homes. Martial law is what President Marcos called in the implementation of martial law in the Philippines. He tried to give a legal face to the authoritarian government, so he called it constitutional authoritarianism. Through the constitution of 1973, the government changed the power structure in the government. We became a parliamentary government with a prime minister who is supposed to hold the power in the government, but in fact, President Marcos is the real power. Because of martial law, Marcos Jr. did not end in 1973. Instead, he continued as president for 13 more years. Under the new society, the Marcos government tried to support the rice, coconut, and sugar industries. Through programs like Philippine Sugar Commission, Coconut Consumer Stabilization Fund, Masagana 99 for rice. The government created a system for lending to farmers buying equipment and selling products. Many things changed in the lives of Filipino when martial law was declared. The government and the military controlled various aspects of life. Newspapers, radio, television, movies, and large industries. Political opponents were arrested and imprisoned, and many were forbidden to speak against the government. 
organize and strike because of their experience that pushed the Filipinos to have and achieve freedom from the dictatorship of President Marcos. In 1986, the Filipino people were angry at the abuse of power by the dictatorship of President Marcos. There was a strike for four days and the People's Power Revolution happened. On the first day on February 22, 1986, People began to gather on EDSA outside the Camp Krame. Defense Minister Juan Ponce Enrile and former Vice Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Fidel Ramos, resigned from the Marcos administration. The next day, February 23, 1986, the call of Jaime Cardinal Sims steered up the Filipino people. More and more people went to EDSA and supported the call to oust Marcos, and the military also arrived there in the war tanks. February 24, 1986 was the third day. The Marcos camp threatened to attack, but the number of people striking against his administration continued to grow until the last day of the revolution came on, February 25, 1986. Because of the strength of the forces of the Filipino people who supported the revolution, it seems that the sun will not rise for Marcos. Early in the morning, the military's plan to attack Camp Krame was foiled. At around 5 in the morning, President Marcos decided not to step down, following the advice of his wife, and former First Lady Imelda Marcos. But almost 30 minutes later, he gave the go signal to his family that he would leave Malacanang that day. While Cory Aquino's camp was preparing at the Filipino club in San Juan for his inauguration as the new president. The people there were on guard, waiting in case Marcos' camp would attack them and stop the inauguration. By 10.46 in the morning, Cory Aquino arrived and took the oath as the president of the Philippines to Senior Justice Claudio Tejante and appointing Senator Salvador Laurel as the Vice President. Raise your right hand and repeat after me your oath of office. I, I Corazon Coanco Aquino, Corazon Coanco Aquino, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully and conscientiously, and conscientiously fulfill my duties, fulfill my duties as President of the Philippines, as President of the Philippines. Marcos changed his mind upon leaving the palace. Marcos always prepared to his own inauguration in the ceremonial hall of Malacanang at around 11:15 in the morning and Marcos was also sworn in an president but the live courage was cut off while on air. It turns out that the transmitter of the government channel was fired at the same time. In response, movie cameras were used to record his presidential oath to Chief Justice Ramon Aquino. After that, Marcos came out of the balcony and showed up to his supporters. Conflict flared on both sides, but democracy and people power continued to prevail. Around 4 p.m. in Malacanang, U.S. Brigadier General Ted Allen offered the Marcos family to, do, to use American helicopters or maybe ships to leave Malacanang, but Marcos said he would rather die in the palace. At 5 in the afternoon, Marcos called in relay to try to communicate the idea of leaving Malacanang, but the family started to revolt. It was 6 o'clock in the afternoon, when the president was finally decided to leave Malacanang. At 7 o'clock in the evening in Malacanang, the Marcos family luggage was loaded into the boat and the Pangarap Golf Course was prepared where helicopters would pick up the Marcos family. At 8.40 in the evening, the convoy ensured the passage of the Marcos family. A few minutes later, the family and its other allies are taken to the helicopter one by one. When they arrived at the Claire Air Base, they were greeted with the shouts of the Aquino supporters. At around 9 o'clock in the evening, it was announced on the radio that Marcos had finally left the country. After this, the Filipino entered the Malacanang where the left belongings of Marcos's were exposed. At this point, Filipinos have achieved democracy from so-called dictatorship of President Marcos and people power has made a mark in history. Thanks for joining us on this historical adventure. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos. Until next time, Bye. keep exploring, keep learning, and keep making a difference.